Hello, I am Professor Quack. Not Quackles, like some people like to call me. I wonder and who calls is... you that. I have no idea, but they exist. This is my guy, Zero. Uh, I don't know. I was kind of thrown into this. I didn't have time to think of an intro. Uh, so uh, what are we playing today? You just, you like to ruin the magic of everything, don't you? Uh, we're playing Prince of Persia Warrior Inn because it's one of my favourite Prince of Persia games. Contrary to what a lot of other people might want to say about it. A lot of people say it's very needlessly dark and edgy. And to be honest, yeah, it kind of is. But at the same time... Is that the charm of it? Uh, I guess you could argue to an extent. I would have preferred it if it wasn't. But at the same time, the, this expands so much on the original game. Like, um, actual gameplay-wise, that I kind of think the trade-off is almost worth it. Like, I can, I can still appreciate Warrior of Vim for what it is. A lot of people don't like the excessive backtracking either, which is like, yeah, fair enough. I struggled a bit with the backtracking as a kid. Also, uh, this is the PC version of the game, and for whatever reason, there's very frequent lag whenever I'm playing. And some of the graphics don't work properly. And there is possibly the chance that the game just might outright freeze. Because I was testing this game beforehand, hence why we're past the tutorial. And a big problem... I wonder why there's no sound. Yeah, see, stuff like this just happens. Well, that's... Well, yeah, but yeah, no, as, I was, as, I was as I was testing this beforehand, um, I died during the tutorial, and during the tutorial, a quick FMV plays as a ship crashes into your ship, and as I went past that area again, just, bef just as the FMV was about to play, the game just completely froze, and I'm assuming it having to play the same FMV twice in one go was probably too much for it. I can't tell how much of this is a fault of it being a crappy port, and how much of it is a fault of it being played on Windows 10. But, I'd still argue it's worth the money. It's, it's like two quid on the- Oh, look at that! Combos! You know, this lack Could of sound is- for two quid. This lack of sound is driving me nuts. Yeah, there really is just, like, no sound. Oh, well, that's what you're putting up with. Oh, no, wait. Oh, man. Nope, sound just came back. Hooray! Um, uh, yeah, that's all I really have to say about this at the moment. And that's all I really want to get into at the moment, because, after all, we just watched something before recording. We did. What did we watch? I don't know, it's... <laughs> it, it all together. Uh, well, okay, okay, movie. before... Bef bef uh, while we're skirting around this, I would like to say that it is a film directed by the famed Masaaki Yuasa, the man who made the adaptation of Devil Man, the adaptation of Ezuken, Night is Short, Walk On Girl, and... We watched his first directorial role. Oh yeah, this is Boob Lady, by the way. Hello, Boob Lady. Just we... thinking about that movie we watched has drained me. It's fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> what even happened? Don't worry about it, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, oh, okay, we, we're talking about Mind Game, obviously. It was his first ever directorial debut. And let me tell you, it's the wild one. <laughs> yeah, and then the music just goes I... away again. What is this? Destroy him. I don't oh, even no, wait, it's back. know. I still don't know how I feel about it. Like, it made me feel. <laughs> to be honest, that's all you can Positive, really ask. Negative. I don't know. Just like there's. It starts off with just a, a bunch of things happening to different people's lives. And there's a girl 
running, gets her ankle caught in the train door. There's the, and we find out that the main character really likes her, but he's terrified of doing anything. So they talk for a bit, and they go to um. I think it's like a ramen shop that she and her sister own, mostly her sister. And everything just kind of goes downhill from there. Not quality wise, just for the characters. Well, you know what, I'm willing to like, bet that this lagginess is to do with me having the resolution up too high. I might, at the risk of destroying this record, I'm going to turn down the resolution. Oh no, that's too low. <laughs> Shall I continue? Alright, as I thought, it stopped the record. But we're back now at a lower resolution, but we should be fine. Hurrah! Now, what were you saying about that, uh... Min Gams? Yeah. There's a thing with their dad who basically is talking about all these girls he's been with that are way too young for him. That kind of... It doesn't really go anywhere, except it sort of does, sort of doesn't. It's basically the reason for another guy to be there and be angry at him. That kind of just happens, and they attack all the characters in the shop. <laughs> and, well, and the main character gets shot at the bum and out the head. <laughs> yep. I think that's the most important part of the movie, in my opinion. It's certainly the most important part for that particular character. What was his name? Mishi? Uh, yes. Honestly- Ah! <laughs> Yes. Oh no, I haven't actually unlocked the Santa time yet! No! <laughs> oh no. Ah. Oh. Uh, that's kind of what happens to you know me. What I, you, you know what, I changed my opinion. This game sucks. Who made this game? Did you make this game? I'll kill you, quack. I did not make this game. Oh. Oh well. Yeah, and the scene continues. And the guy that the angry guy is with is like, you disgust me, and then kills him, and then he just kind of eats for a bit. And then we cut to Mishi in the af- not the afterlife, but like a purgatory type of place where we get The waiting room replay. before afterlife. <laughs> yeah. Action replays, constantly, of his death, over and over. Uh, okay, okay. And then, <laughs> Can we and get a slightly he... faster summary of this film? <laughs> yeah, uh, he decides, you know what, I'm gonna go back to the world of the living. He basically rewinds time. He decides, I have overcome death. I no longer fear it. I'm gonna fight and I'm gonna take this girl and her sister with me. So there's this chase scene. You wanna call it goes that? on for a while. And then... Oh, I'm gonna do it again! Oh, I am! <laughs> Speaking of action replays... Just when you think they're about to get caught, they go flying out to sea and get eaten by a whale. Okay, bearing in mind you have only described the first 25 minutes of this hour and 45 this, minute long film. And bearing in mind that the next hour and 20 hour. minutes of the film take place entirely within the whale that ate them. Yep, they be an old guy who helps them adjust. And then they just kind of turn into hippies for a bit. Oh wow, I didn't realise you could speed up cutscenes by pressing the button. Sequences. Huh? Oh yeah, there was that guy that the girl was going to marry, but then after he gets knocked out, he is completely forgotten. <laughs> for the rest of the movie. He's n <laughs> Well, he's no longer a Chad. He no longer exists. But that goes on, they have all these sequences. I don't even know how to describe them, they just kind of happen. I mean, that's kind of the whole like, film. 
<laughs> they tried to escape the whale a couple of times. And okay, 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 okay. I, 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 I just want to describe. To. I just want to describe one sequence. Like you should watch it for yourselves. So consider this this the final spoiler warning after having, after having. What's wrong with his animation? Okay. After having the, f like the first third of the film completely spoiled, this is your last chance to walk away now. Like, okay, this doesn't really have any relevance on the film whatsoever, but what happens is, there's this really trophy sequence where they're all just kind of laughing and having fun, and it's all timed to that piece of music that they play in that one Tom and Jerry episode where they're like fighting over control of the piano. And it's, there's no way of describing what happens. It's utterly bizarre and mad and very, very weird. But in a very, very good way. It Honestly, that to me is exactly what animation is designed for. You couldn't do that in film. You know Speaking what I'm of, how about those live-action-esque <gasps> things that also happen? They kind of only really happen for the first third of the film, and then they're just probably forgotten about until near the end. <laughs> it's so beautiful. <laughs> they just come out of nowhere, and then they're gone as fast as they appeared. They tend to just happen in close-ups, but what they do is they replace the um, drawn faces with just um, animated pictures of real people. It's very peculiar, but it's it's got a weird, odd charm to it as well. I I think that's the best way to describe that film. Just charm. Some of it doesn't look pretty, but it's still charming. <laughs> oh wait a minute! I don't even need to fight this guy. Hotcha! See, look at that sneaky, sneaky. Uh. Honestly, I think the weirdest thing of the film for me is that, and I know this probably would sound weird from someone like me, since I'm a big proponent of there being no like set art styles, but it really doesn't look like anime, if you know what I mean. Oh, uh, I get what you mean. It's certainly uh, not like the. It's kind of just people doing what they want. Okay, it looks more like one of those weird French animations you'd see on the internet. Rather than an actual, like, full-on anime. Like, the characters are very... Almost Western design. Like, if anyone's seen that one episode of Panty and Stocking, where the cat, where the characters are suddenly... Where it's like this dude in an office job, and the art style is like a drastic shift, that everyone has this weirdly proportioned thing where like their chest and head are really huge but like their arms and legs just kind of spindle out into stubs it kind of looks like that but with even more western design choices it's very weird but it's very good because i've never seen a style like that animated by the japanese before but oh man 2004. That was that for 2004 for an anime that had some damn some good CG of... effects as well. Some as well were really impressive. The what? The camera angles. Yeah, some of those were really good. Like just just for reference, this came out in 2004. Death Note came out in what 2007, and there's that one shot in episode two where it like pans around like lights room and it kind of looks like his house is made out of Playmobil. And it very awkwardly tries to keep him from looking like he's still a part of the environment, and it doesn't really work out. It like it looks demonstrably worse. And I know it's a TV production, but these things are really down to the skill of the animators. So, well, that and the time they're allocated, which could be a big factor. Who knows? Who animated Death Note? Was it Madhouse? I feel like it was Madhouse. I don't think it was though. Maybe it was Studio Mapper. I Mapa. do not know. You know nothing. How did that movie make you feel? Uh, it made me feel a number of things. I actually feel like I was able to figure out what it was about towards the end. I think it's about society. Just what 
society and people in general, just what they're capable of, what they can do, how they react to certain situations. It's just a weird demonstration of people and what they do in given situations. At least that's what I gathered um, based on the fact that they had a, just a montage at the beginning and end of the film of just people doing stuff. Good stuff, bad stuff, innovative stuff, worthless stuff. Like, ah! <laughs> I just got bitch slapped. <laughs> there we go, now I got me Sands of Time. I'm unstoppable now. This is the greatest feature in the entire game. You know what the Sands of Time do? Turn back time. Uh, is this going to be yeah, like watch the this. rewind? Wahoo! So this is the rewind thing with um, Mega Man. Uh, yes, but I have limited uses. And I have to get more by attacking enemies. Uh, I can't remember if it was introduced as early as this game, but... Uh, at so least, at least in one of the Sands of Times not. games, you can use the Sands of Times in different ways. Because um, you could use it as a slowdown ability to get through certain doors that would otherwise close too quickly. I'm not sure if this game does it though. I think the original trilogy only sticks to. Um... Wait, we can't attack him yet. There's a cutscene. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> so yeah, what would you give Mind Game at ten? <laughs> ten. I think on my scale of 1 to 10, I would give it up. It was so mind-boggling, I can't truly fault it. It really makes the last sequence of Night is Short, Walk On Girl make more sense. Oh yeah, look. They stick this pole in the middle of the room so I can do this. Wahoo! That is amazing. Do it again. I'm disappointed that you didn't do the Wahoo again. Uh, I... Just thinking about that movie has drained me. It's a very fascinating film and I recommend everybody watch it. Nice. I love it when people I love it when like people hide concept art for me to find. Have you ever just like walk down the street and just punch something open and inside was an illustration of yourself? I did once, I was very concerned. Oh, nice. Oh man, Prince of Persia is so cool. I think as well, the thing about... with that movie... That was... less than an hour after I'd finished um, Ori and the Blind Forest. Oh yes, you played Ori and the Blind Forest, why don't you tell us about that? That game hurt me. I, I don't like it. How did it hurt you? Did it lunge out of the screen and it attack you? It made me cry. Oh, it doesn't take much to make you cry, does it, Quack? I pluck a feather from I... your head and you cry. You cry at weddings, you, you cry at funerals. There's no rhyme or you reason to it. You pluck a feather from my head and I punch you. Ooh, narrowly avoided that one. God, I don't like the drinking yeah, from water uh, every single time makes you Ori say- Ori in the Blind Forest is visually and um, audibly absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah, there's no denying that, especially for an indie game. Uh, like, the thing, the thing with, with it for me as well was I played it on easy and it was still- because it's like one, I'm not good. Yeah, at video okay. Games. I was you about to say, look, to uh, look, I, I. But like, this is why I play the games. Into, one of my other friends who's big into um, Ori has said himself, it is tricky even on easy. No, it's not. <laughs> Shut up. Let me be validated. Your friend is simply not a credible source. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. But yeah, I got through it. I I got through it. I got to the end. And in case anyone 
who hasn't played it is watching this, I won't say what happens. Oh, come on, that game is ancient. The sequel's out now. Who cares? Whoa. I mean, unlike Mind Game, you can't actually describe what happens in Ori. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to be, to be fair. Uh, okay, oh, so if it, anyone's uh, wondering why I make fun of her so much for being terrible at video games, she struggled to beat the first level of Shovel Knight. Oh, Shovel, your knight. Ooh, spicy. I don't think that's appropriate for YouTube. Really? I thought it. I was just saying I'm gonna bury you. Oh no, that's not what you were saying at all. Don't worry about it though. Cool. Moving sw moving swiftly on. How was I your will... experience with Ori in the Blind Forest? I tell tell, tell me about that. The uh, quote unquote villain of the game is really more a victim of circumstance, and it breaks my heart what happens to them. That sounds like a spoiler alert if I've ever heard one. I've already said that the game hurt me at the end. Lunge down and, and attack. I abs and I despise it for all it's worth, and I can't wait to get started on Will of the Wisps. And then I'll turn up, and then I'll play it so that I can get the experience for free. And you won't cry because you have a heart of... Well, I said stone, but you said lead because you're a toxic person. Ah, oh, you... You've ruined the joke. I was hoping you'd say stone and then I could say lead and then we could, ha like, do the whole bit as if it was the first time we'd done it, but you had to be all genuine. Let me tell you, kid, honesty gets you nowhere in this industry. Oh man. Prince tried to be honest, and look where it got him. Now we're killing sand monsters that, that bleed for some reason. Okay, I think this is the non-linear part that everybody wasn't a big fan of, because if memory serves, you come back to either this place or a similar looking place very frequently. Because the idea is that you have to go to four different places throughout the game, um, but you always return back to the sort of central hub, sort of Mario 64 style. I don't think this is the place, but there's de but it definitely exists. Man, I haven't played this game in forever. Yeah, but you're you're apparently opposed to um, honesty, so how can we trust anything you say? You take everything <laughs> to the most extraordinary extreme I've ever seen. Go on, t t t t and it rolls you up every time. All right, that's uh, this my 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 <laughs> turn for a topic. I watched an anime. What anime did you watch? No, that's it. That's my whole topic. You stuck at this. <gasps> oh, I was just because an enemy was there. Uh, okay. I watched a pretty old one called Serial Experiment Lane. I don't think anyone's ever heard of that, and to be honest, I don't really blame you. I only came across it because I saw a YouTube video with the PS1 cutscenes. So, I gave that a watch, and the best way I can describe it is the last two episodes of Evangelion, but it's the whole show. As far as I can tell, it, uh, it's, about a it's about a girl called Lane. And she get it's a sci-fi setting, so she's got all sorts of fancy computers, and she sort of like slowly integrates with this new network system called the Wired or something like that. I will admit I did not pay the most attention, but then um, she slowly integrates more and more with it, and the sort of boundaries between the physical world and the digital world kind of crumble apart. And it's a very interesting look into the ways that technology can affect people and the um, and sense of identity. Because that was probably the main theme of Serial Experiment Lane. Uh, she very much struggled with her own sense of identity because she was integrating herself further and further with a system. And she also had a split personality disorder. 
And because of everything that was going on, and the way it was presented to us, neither we nor her could really determine whether or not what we were seeing or what she was seeing or what she was even doing was her, or what part of her was doing it. And it got pretty weird towards the end, and I don't even want to attempt to deconstruct it. Cause so it's it, not going to be the next thing we watch. I've already. I just watched the whole thing though. Watch it again. I don't want to watch it again. It was, <laughs> it was too much of a brain drain. Let's just go back to watching Courage. Yeah, Courage the Cowardly Dog. What a great show. So My favorite part about Courage so is. When you watch it as an adult, you realize how many references the creators put into themselves. Like, any time Eustace is watching the TV, it's always just the creator of the show doing like a tap dance or something stupid like that. Oh, cool, a head fell off. Whenever there's anything that's branded, it's always still brand. To be fair, Studio Bones always likes to um, brand everything as Bones. <laughs> okay. Uh, the I, I've neglected to mention it until now, but this is a prime example of why I prefer climbing and platforming and traversal in this game as opposed to Uncharted. There is actual degrees of autonomy and player input. Uh, Where'd he go? I could have sworn he was here. Hmm. Must have been the wind. See, if this was Uncharted, that would have just been automatic. It's split it off! Yeah! Oh, I love this game. Okay, I will admit this is pretty stupid. I don't like having to walk across a beam and doing some weird, like, analog stick shuffle just to keep myself balanced. I feel like a lot of the time that's just kind of annoying. Oh, yeah. Here's, here's something cool. Watch this. Oh, whoop! Oh, no! <laughs> it didn't work. No, 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 no. Okay. Hit. Here's, here's a great... Oh, you bastard. The way that happened, it looked like the wall hurt you. Yeah, look at that. Nice. But yeah, uh, one thing I really do love about Prince of Persia is the way the platforming and the combat are very well integrated together. I didn't demonstrate it very well there, but... Like, the same wall run you used to climb and traverse, I could actually use that to leap over an enemy's head and slice it off. It's really, really cool. But obviously he was not close enough. What were we talking about? Oh yeah, Serial Experiments Lane. Very weird, I'm not sure if I'd even recommend it, but if you need, if you need something weird and existential just to satisfy some weird urge you have like I did then I would highly recommend it. If not just for the interesting way the characters portray themselves. Because nobody really talks like a human being. Everyone kind of acts cryptic and tired and like they're not really all there. Not gonna lie, I'm not entirely sure what the tactic is against these things. Did you ever see Evangelion? I did not. It wasn't one that really crossed, um... That really crossed my path, and I'd occasionally hear about it, but... I just never got to watching it. Don't you know not to strike a woman? I don't know what I'm doing. But um, now that I've finished um, now that I've finished the Blind Forest, I'm actually gonna go back and properly play Half Life. Half Life. Yeah, so I've played some of it, but I, th I just thought that I was a very weird got... segment. It's just like I'm gonna go from owning the Blind Forest to Half Life. Yeah, cause um, I played through part of it, but I think just cause at the time I didn't get 
I didn't really get past um, getting through the lab, so I just constantly felt like I wasn't making progress, so I kind of just stopped. I've never really played Half-Life, so I don't know where the labs is. Black Mesa. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I thought you at least knew Portal. Yeah, I know Portal. I honestly, yeah, honest to God, go on when it comes Black to the Mesa, like in Portal Two with Cave Johnson, like he constantly talks about why Black Mesa sucks. I'm gonna be honest, I did not commit the like name of the place to memory. At least I know I'm not the only one around here who hasn't played Half Life. Honestly, it's just never really looked all that appealing to me. It's like an early FPS. Like, if I wanted to play an FPS, I'm pretty sure these days there's something better out there. Like, I honestly think a lot of love for Half Life is driven by, like, nostalgia. Nostalgia and Half Life 3 memes. Why won't you die? Oh, she should kill me. Oh, come on! <laughs> Phil, for me, tell me about Half-Life. Um, Why do you want to play Half-Life Half -Life anyway? What? Why do you want to play Half-Life anyway? I didn't think that was your style of game. I mean, I think mainly it's because I, I love Portal so much. And I'm just like, I should actually play Half-Life and see what the Black Mesa side of the story exactly was. Isn't that what the wikis are for? Yeah, but that's no fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wait, I've just gone the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, but no, but yeah, but no, but... Ow! Yeah, Half-Life has just always kind of eluded me. Like, I know the first one was revolutionary, I know the second one was revolutionary, but like, eh. Not for me, Squire. Oh, what? Where'd you come from? I think it's mainly like... In terms of the gameplay itself, it doesn't look all that interesting to me, but I'm wanting to know what the Black Mesa side of the whole story was. Isn't Half-Life, like, free these days? Uh, I think so. I'm pretty sure I got it either... I either got it for free, or I got it for pennies. Well, it might be worth playing some time on here. What do you think about Valve in general? Um, I'm still waiting for them to release another bloody game. Oh wait, they released that Half-Life VR thing, didn't they? Never mind. Yeah. But does that really count? Was that a full experience? I have no idea. I'm not even memeing. Could someone um, please tell me? <laughs> I'm not sure, because I, I don't know exactly how they intend to make VR accessible to more of an audience because like from what i've seen of people playing vr a lot of the games on it seem more like tech demos than full games 